Anthem. Really getting warmed up here, just moments away. We'll be back right after this. The weekend has officially begun, and we welcome you to this 2K Sports presentation of NBA Basketball. With Greg Anthony and Chris Weber, this is Kevin Harlan. David Aldridge will be reporting from the sidelines. Now a chance to take a look at some numbers for D'Angelo Russell. And right now, he's in one of those grooves where he has a tremendous feel for the game. His assist numbers these past five look a lot different than from the rest of the season. And by different, I mean better. And with pregame routines coming to an end, we're just about ready for our tip-off. First, though, let's get a report from the sideline and say hello to David Aldridge. Hey, Kevin, we have seen D'Angelo Russell's ice in my veins celebration after he makes big shots. And Dilo credits his father for the inspiration, saying he used to say that all the time. Play like you have ice in your veins. So that's how I play. No feeling, letting it go, playing free. Kevin, that's how I'm doing the sideline report tonight. He sure does. Fantastic, David. Thank you. And the pace of this game unlikely to be high, Chris. Both these teams like to slow it down and run half-court sets. Oh, yeah, Kevin. Neither one of these teams wants to turn this into a boat race. Chances will be limited, and it's crucial to minimize turnover. So let's take a look at the Charlotte starting lineup. Washington and Zeller are in the middle. Terry Rozier is out there with Ball, and it's Hayward in at the three slot. And for the Timberwolves, Russell is out there with Malik Beasley. Then there's Towns, and there's McDaniels, and it's Hernan Gomez in at the four. So the Hornets. In the tip. Ball, the pass to Rogier. Back to ball. From deep. Sinks it. What range from outside? Wow. Ball's got his team on the board to start the game for Charlotte. Now Russell really played well against Memphis in his last outing. Off target from outside. And it's the Hornets ball. It's a three-point game. Ball, the pass to Hayward. Towns with the steal. And now the Timberwolves on the break. Towns with the ball. And that one is good by Beasley. And how about the quick eyes there from Towns? Finds a hole in the defense and exploits it there with a nice find. Beasley against Rogier. And the rejection by Towns. Pulls up. Misses off the left iron. And a wide open look for Zeller. That three off the mark. Timberwolves have gone one of three for the field to start this one so far. And the slam dunk by Russell. I love the spatial awareness from Russell. Saw how much room he had and just took it aggressively. Rozier looking around. Over Herning Gomez. And again, the Hornets missing. They know they can't give him that shot. The D's are 
over, not even giving him an inch of space. And even three on three break. Here's Rozier. Not going to go that time. Excellent D there from Beasley. Just one for five from the field now. I mean, they've come out flat. They need to pick up the energy. Greg, maybe not the tallest big in the league, but Washington's reach is the great equalizer. He stands only 6'7", but that 7'2 wingspan, it allows him to play big, snatch rebounds in traffic, and make contested shots in the paint. I think the young fella's got a bright future. Now, here's Ball. He had an 18-point outing in the last game against the Rockets in Houston. Yeah, and don't forget about his passing. I mean, he didn't forget about his teammates. He was spreading the ball all over the floor. Shot by McDaniels, no good. And here's Hayward. He'll bring it up for the Hornets. They trail by one. Tough loss coming against the Rockets in the last game they played. Yeah, tough game on the road. The, the guys you're defending, obviously comfortable shooting in their own building. You've got to find a way to break their rhythm. You've got to be locked in on the road. I mean, when there's no cohesiveness on defense, you're in danger. Outside, ball. Fires for three. That's his second shot and his second basket. He's two for two. Alert play on the part of Washington. He's a much stronger player when he shows the type of awareness and unselfishness. Towns picks for Russell. And once again off the mark by Minnesota. And even without that three ball dropping for him, the defense should have done more on that last play. There's Ball with the three. Minnesota with the rebound. Here's McDaniels. A rebound by Washington. Washington's got his fourth rebound in this one. The dish, the ball. Rozier against Hernan Gomez. And the basket by Rozier. A clever play. Rozier able to navigate through the contact to a strong finish. Timberwolves trail by six. So the Timberwolves call their first timeout. Want to keep rolling here following the win against Memphis. Yeah, and with most of the arena against them, they just banded together and trusted one another to make the right play. Well, the crowd didn't seem to phase them at all. They knew what their game plan was and followed it accordingly. With the All-Star game almost here, let's see how the West is shaping up. You look at the Timberwolves. They're down in 10th place here in the middle part of the season. They'll need to make a move soon. And I think for the Timberwolves, they're one of those teams that hasn't quite figured it out this year. A lot of talent, a lot of heart, but nothing to put them up on that next level. Yeah, yeah they're kind of in that caught-in-the-middle type group. You know what I mean? <laughs> you wonder if they need a personnel change to get over the hump. Al Rogier. After D'Angelo Russell's three-pointer, they didn't go. And out of bounds is the Timberwolves gain possession. An outstanding defensive play to earn the mobile one block. And early in the game, a defensive play like that goes a long way, establishing the attitude you want. Here's Russell. Very solid contribution from him as he averages over 20 points a game. Passes it to Hernan Gomez. The Timberwolves working the ball around now to stop the run. And it's Towns missing. And right from the start, Kevin, they've been pounding the glass. Most of those 50-50 balls also going their way. Ogier, the pass to Zeller. Shoots over McDaniel. Shot by Zeller, no good. Timberwolves trail by six. Here's Hernan Gomez. Another shot. Hayward with some nice D. This quarter has been hit or miss for him. Mostly miss. He dialed that one up from long distance. Rozier's got his second basket of the night. That was part of what makes Rozier a great out. scorer. He doesn't need to handle the rock to get points. And the Timberwolves call time here. And the NBA, Chris, with a long regular season, we know that. Are there things that can make the season seem even longer or, or shorter or, or in between for that matter? 
<laughs> yeah, Kevin, well, I tell you what, the cliche, time flies when you're having fun. We all know that's true. So when you're losing or not seeing eye to eye, that's when the season can really drag on. We get this break in the action. Let's find out which rookies have been lighting it up from downtown this month. In the third spot, Anthony Edwards. And, of course, Jaden McDaniel. The three-pointer was the weapon of choice for both of them, and it was very effective. Shot clock at six. The Timberwolves again can't hit. You know, he might want to think about deferring for a while. He's had his chances this quarter, but just not able to convert. Oh, great ball movement there. Timberwolves trail by 11. Russell with it. Pass to Hernan Gomez. And nothing is falling for him right now. And a fast break now for the Hornets. And that one is off. So Minnesota will take it the other way. Just not fair from a rhythm standpoint right now. It's really eluding him. Here's Washington. The offensive rebound. And another shot. And the basket is good. And he's got a chance here for one more at the line. You got to really wrap up Washington on the way up. I mean, he'll muscle his way through the contact. And this is his first trip to the line tonight. And, you, you know, something I remember from their last game was how good he was at the line. That free throw good from Washington. Well, P.J. Washington defines what it means to be a modern big. I mean, the hybrid label has been turned into a positive. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively, for sure. And here is McDaniel. He's another guy who had a stellar performance in the win against Memphis. <laughs> Look at the handles. Gets through the D and then powers it home. Such a pretty move inside. Clark, how do you stop that? Minnesota shooting their first free throw of the game right now. And they've had really good numbers all season from the free throw line. The free throw drops from McDaniel. Greg, the NBA under Adam Silk has been aggressive looking for ways to enhance the product and attract fans. Where do you fall on that point? Push the envelope or don't rock the boat or maybe somewhere in between? I think it might be somewhere in between. These days, people's attentions can be pulled in so many different directions. I think they're smart to not rest on their laurels and to continue to try to evolve. But with that evolution, sometimes it's not going to come over as well as they would like. But I, I'm a fan of some of the experiments, I should say, that we've tried thus far. And I hope the league continues to push the envelope. That's a good thought. Yeah, they built up this lead three points at a time. Oh, yeah, they certainly found something along the perimeter. Just an onslaught of three-point bombs. Now, here is Russell. Beasley for three. Good, and the assist goes to Russell. Beasley's got five now. The real come at us, and we're coming right back at you. Let's talk about it. the great competition going on. That's what makes a matchup like this so much fun to watch. And now the first timeout called here for the Hornets. Every timeout, a chance to review the lineups, matchups, or call a play. You know, that's what coaches are paid to do, right? I mean, curious to see what they go with here.
and let's take a look at Carl Anthony Towns' numbers. Just an incredible month of basketball. Fourth in rebounding, and he's as opportunistic as anybody defensively, ranking among the top 15 league-wide in steals per game. And he's so explosive, so hungry. You really can't keep him off the glass when he wants to get there. That's why he's top five in rebounding. Now, here's Ball. He's got eight. Here's Hayward. That falls. Nice feed that time from Ball. Eight points for him. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket, coming off a pretty pass. Beasley against Rozier. And the rejection by Towns. And his foot movement is what makes Towns such a terrific shot blocker. He moves so well and can defend just about any position on the floor. Timberwolves trail by 13. Russell from long range. And Rozier pulls it down. Rozier's got six rebounds here tonight. Uh, a team to rebounding is a great measure of its energy. And theirs has been terrific here in the first quarter. Their play on both ends has been superb. We, we'll see if they can maintain the momentum. Yeah, we got to be careful. It's still early. They've expended a lot of energy, but they've also built a nice cushion here. And the Timberwolves have made it clear Carl Anthony Towns is their franchise player. He's the guy they're building around. Now, here is Russell. And the pass to Towns. To halt the run, it's tipped. Oh, great instincts there from Washington. Reading the situation and rising up to spike it. And we've heard Towns for years pronouncing his happiness with the Timberwolves. Last season, Greg, as the losses piled up, some rumors that he was getting frustrated. Well, we've seen this pattern with the Timberwolves before, right? Kevin Garnett, Kevin Love, all-star big men who ended up leaving the Twin Cities to win titles. And the first one at the line is good. And already a leader. At such a young age, Towns' teammates look to him to anchor them on both ends, and he has not disappointed. And Towns drops them both. Today, Greg, we see a lot more friendly rival. Does that bother you? Not at all. I mean, people like to say, well, our era had the rivalries were more bitter. Um, I disagree with that. I, I think guys are every bit as competitive today as they've ever been. It's good to hear. Uh, they just also have more exposure and opportunity to be around one another. Kids today growing up, they've been playing against each other since the fifth, sixth grade in national tournaments. When we played, we didn't get to see the other top players around the country. So I think that was one reason why you didn't have a closeness with guys that unless you were on the same team. And finished off by McDaniel. You gotta love his hustle, leaving the defense in no time to react. And how about then not settling? I mean, instead of being lazy with the shot selection, they go right to the rim. And the Hornets miss again. And so it's Towns with it. He brings it up for Minnesota. It's a 14-point game. Now with the D playing soft off him. He might have been better off taking it to the hoop instead of settling for the jump. Ball, the pass to Zeller. They shoot again. Ball with the bucket. Ball's got 10 points. Displaying intensity right off the opening tip, especially on the offensive end. Yeah, they've been very aggressive, and they've taken early control of this game. Now, here is Hernan Gomez. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. Towns kicks to Russell. Towns trying to get open. They get the rebound. Yep, it counts. The long arms, the positioning. Towns is excellent at knowing how to gobble up those second chance opportunities. Rozier against Beasley. Right wing. Here's Washington. And that one goes long. Timberwolves trail by 14. Here's McDaniels. It's rebounded by Charlotte. 
He's been cold, and it's been hurting him. The D, I mean, was ready for him. He hasn't been able to solve it. But he recovers it. Rozier finds Zeller. Hayward outside. Outside, ball. Tries again. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. That's on D'Angelo Russell. This is his first free throw of the game. First free throw is good. Lehman, he's checked in for Minnesota. Culver comes in for Russell. The Hornets also with a sub. Yambo, he's checked in for Zeller. Ball hits them both. Oh, he's never rattled at the strike. Always has that nice soft touch on his free throws. Two seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. Here's Culver. He's averaging around five and a half points a game. Pass to Towns. Over Hayward. And Towns the bucket on the assist by Culver. Towns has got nine points. Possessing the touch from there. I like when Towns shows off that smooth mid-range game. And so it's the Charlotte Hornets with a 14-point lead as we bring the quarter to a close. Their transition game has been in full effect, and we'll be right back after this. And speaking with Carl Anthony Towns earlier, he was asked about how the team approaches defensive adjustments. For us defensively, we stay very disciplined to what we say we want to do. Don't change. Uh, never uh, waver from what our game plan is. We, we should be fine. So they want to devise, Greg, a strategy, come in and impose their will. And that's what they want to do, but the reality is the best teams in the league know how to adapt. And so far through one quarter, it's been a lopsided game. We'll see if that changes here in the second. Looking at what we've seen from the Hornets, uh, pretty much in control here, it would appear. You, you got to credit their defense. Communicating, rotating, making plays on the ball. No question. He's been stifling thus far, preventing that offense from establishing any kind of rhythm. We've got Colton. Layman is out there with Towns. Then it's Malik Beasley. And it's McDaniels in at the three. That's the five to begin the second quarter for the Timberwolves. Timberwolves trail by 11. And the lead is down inside single digits. McDaniels got five points now this quarter. Your heads up aggressive play right there. Saw the smaller man on him and took it straight to the basket. And that's a foul called on Malik Beasley. That is his first foul of the game. Second quarter, and we're just over a minute in. Washington finds ball, and it's blocked. And great positioning there for Culver. That's what allowed him to get the block. Here's McDaniel. Defended by Bridges. Oh, man. As good of a shooter as he is, it drives him crazy to miss a wide open three like that. And the basket by Rozier. Uh, unwilling to let up, even for a moment. That's his killer instinct just fanning the flame. Oh, yeah. That's what you love about him. He shows no mercy, even with a comfortable lead. Charlotte leading by 11. Right side, ball. Shoots over McDaniel. And it hung on the rim, but wouldn't fall for him. 
Here's Lehman. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. Greg is a broadcaster. Who have been some of your favorite personalities to cover? Man, that's a great question. Uh, you know, most of the stars, I'm a big fan of, of Duran and Steph and LeBron and those guys. Chris Paul's another one that's a favorite. Uh, so many of the guys, you know, there's so much more personality and so much more confidence these, these guys have working uh, in front of the camera. I think that just makes for a, a better experience. Somebody asked me the other day, who was my favorite? You know who I said? Who was that? Greg Anthony. Oh, you're just saying that because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at who's out there now for the Timberwolves. Andre Hollis Jefferson, he's checked in for McDaniels. And it's Edwards in for Beasley. Torrey Craig, he's checked in for the Hornets. Good on both. Second quarter of play with around two minutes on so far. Passes to Biombo. Rozier against Edwards. And it's Rozier missing. A fantastic effort on D to get up in his face and deny the layup. There's Hollis Jefferson. That's tipped. And he's able to get it back. Misses off the right eye. Hornets leading by nine. And it's slammed in by Bridges. You know, once Bridges realized the break was on, I mean, he was off to the races. His coaches will appreciate his effort level. That's to Edwards. Kicks it to Culver. A three-pointer off the mark. And they had some botched coverage that turned into no coverage. And that one, good. Rozier's got 12 points in the game. Uh, I don't think you can stop Rozier just by getting physical with him. He, he's too single-minded a score to let that stop. Now here's Towns. Nine points in the game so far. Edwards, that's good. Oh, don't forget about this fella for a second. He is the definition of dangerous. The pass the ball. He's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. It goes on Jared Culver. Nice work to get it inside and draw the contact. This is his second trip to the free throw line. One falls for him. And the Timberwolves making a change here. Davis is checked in. Devontae Graham's checked in for Charlotte. Ball oh, hits them both. Now Culver. Still looking for his first bucket in this one. Pass to Lehman. And here in the second quarter of action, as we approach four minutes played, outside town. No good from outside. Yeah, and they've shown effort and aggression in the paint, really, right from the tip. Their rebounding edge right now, massive. And the level of focus Bridges has, great job working his way through the contact. Time out, time they out. need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've gone a long time without a bucket. And the Timberwolves call time here. And one of the things that stands out when you see Bridges, that explosive leaping ability. But yeah, he gets off the ground quickly and makes adjustments in midair. There's a smoothness to his athleticism. He's still putting it all together, but there's a lot to work with. D'Angelo Russell's checked in for Ed Davis. Ball against Russell. No one here, Edwards, as he lets it fall. Another miss by Minnesota. A fast break now for Charlotte. I mean, it took him a long time to get into the flow of the game, but the points are starting to come for him now. 
And so it's Russell with it. He'll bring it up for the Timberwolves. Trailing by 17. Culver in the corner. Passes it to Edwards. Bangs home the trifecta. Edwards got five points so far. How about the recognition from Culver? Terrific at realizing when the defense has broken down. Bring him against Russell. Here's Paul. It's deflected. Here's Lehman. Over in the corner, Edward. Eighteen feet out, and there are the Timberwolves with another bucket. Now here's Ball. Fourteen points for him. Has to be on Ball. Ball against Edwards. And a bit of a battle here for the ball. The official signals a jump ball here. And it's the Hornets with the ball. Graham in the corner. Good on the triple. And the Hornets lead by 15. Oh, great ball movement from Bridges there. I mean, the self-awareness, uh, the selfless attitude leading to the wide open shot pass to Towns. Now, here's Culver. Trying to come right back with the three of his own, but it's no good. Graham gets a wide open look and another three for Charlotte. But the D didn't do a good enough job on him. He could be an ace when he gets a good look at three. Here's Minnesota getting their first look of the season at this Hornets team. They have faced off twice last season, and it was a split between the two teams. And that seems about right. I mean, last season uh, was the one that both of these teams would like to forget. They got beat up a lot and couldn't even beat up on each other. Offensive rebound. Biombo. That's good. Biombo's got his first bucket of the night. Uh, straight up effort gets him those points. That's what it's all about on the offensive glass. Russell kicks to Culver. Towns, the pass to Russell. Here's Lehman. Will it go? Nothing that time. He's uh, 0 for 2. Inside. Bridges misses. Timberwolves trail by 20. Lehman pass to Towns. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. Greg, you really began to emerge and got on the national scene at UNLV, but you started your college career at Portland where you were actually named the conference freshman of the year. Yeah, how about I actually averaged more points in Portland than in any season I played at Vegas. Totally different roles, but Portland's always going to have a, a sweet spot in my heart. My first child was born in the great city of Portland. The free throw drops for town. And getting to the line and hitting your free throws, a, a good way to get back into the game. It stops the clock and extends the game and allows you the opportunity to set your defense. They've been perfect from the line so far here in the second quarter. Here's what Minnesota's going with right now. Tyler Zeller comes in for Jake Lane. And a Kogi subbed in for Culver. Hornets leading by 18. Graham with the ball. 14 points from him, the last game against the Rockets in Houston. Here's Monk. A second chance effort, and the layup is good. And defensively, guys, they've been unable to shut down the middle. Russell looking around, and the whistle blows. It's going to be on Devontae Graham. That's his first foul. Pass to Edwards for three. Good, and the assist goes to Town. Towns has got three assists in the game. Well, that's almost a sure thing when you leave him that wide open on the perimeter. I mean, that's his sweet spot. Now, here's Monk. Eight points his last outing. Back to Graham. Six on the shot clock. It's tipped. Out 
right side, Russell. Let's a floater go. Oh, nice defense from Bridges. When he hustles like this, he's capable of swatting shots. Plenty of daylight on that shot. I mean, I don't always like the three on the fast break, but the D was set up well inside. And here's Russell. Pass to Zeller. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. That's on Miles Bridges. Well, you got to credit his work ethic. Tyler Zeller has improved dramatically year after year. I mean, he's now very capable of starting center in this league. The Timberwolves made the most out of their opportunities at the line. They have yet to miss in seven attempts. And he knocks down the first one. And he makes both free throws. Now Graham. He has six. Pass to Bridges. Let's it go from the wing. They get it again. Graham with the bucket. Graham's got eight here in the quarter. And they're forcing the ball inside, and it's working like a charm. And stolen by Graham. Up the floor. Finished off the break. Well, there you go. One team operating on all cylinders at both ends. Steals, fast break buckets, and, and the other team in scramble mode. Now here's Zeller. Eight points his last outing. Edwards dishes to Zeller. No good. Now Charlotte takes it the other way. Bridges for three. And Culver pulls it down. Minnesota shooting 33% in the second quarter. The offense has looked crossed up and confused at times. Well, they pay the price for giving Russell a mid-range look like that. I mean, that shot is well within his abilities. Now, here's Monk. He gives a bit of a scoring lift to the team, averaging eight points a game. Graham with the bucket. Some players might wear down during this kind of run. He's only getting strong. And so it's Russell with it. He brings it up for the Minnesota Timberwolves. From outside the arc, he can't get it to go. He is just really almost playing for the other team. The shooting has just been poor. And it's Graham missing. Timberwolves shooting around 29% from the floor. Tough night for them all around on the offensive end. And obviously his momentum from the last game has carried over here tonight. Yeah, that's why he's hot. He's playing with a lot of confidence. That's why they're going to him with such consistency. And the Hornets call time here. And team strategies closely guarded. One aspect of the game the fans aren't always privy to. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's the most subtle moves that make the biggest difference. Juan Hernan Gomez, he's checked in for the Timberwolves. The Hornets also changing it up. Zeller comes in for Miles Bridges. And Gordon Hayward is subbed in for Martin. McDaniels passes to Zeller. Set up, set up. He kicks it to Graham. Knocked loose. Edwards with it. Now guarded by Monk. Shoots it. Shot clock reset for the Timberwolves. Shot by Zeller, no good. Charlotte leading by 19. Graham from outside. Traps in the tray. Graham's got 15. Boy, has he put his foot 
on the pedal here this quarter. He's doing a terrific job in terms of leading their offense. Now, here is Russell. And again, Minnesota with the triple. And, and shooting better from three-point range here in the second. But overall, still struggling right around 30% from beyond for the game. Monk with the ball. Edwards defending. Here's Zeller. Back to Monk from downtown. A rebound by the Timberwolves. We've got 33 seconds left now here in the second. And finished off by Hernan Gomez. Great teamwork punctuated by a strong finish. Perfect example of how to run the break the right way and get a great look. And he's got his first chance at the line here. So it's the Hornets now. Six second difference between the shot and game clock. Graham from outside. Count that one as his seventh make in eight attempts. A scorching 88%. They couldn't have asked for much more from him today. He's been a key force in their offense. Graham against Russell. And the layup fall. Russell's got seven points here in this quarter. Awesome contact here, but Russell is not intimidated. Comes through it to finish strong. And so is Charlotte out in front by 17 points at the end of the quarter. Their work from beyond the arc has been to highlight a lot of threes, finding the bottom of the bucket. We'll get right back to the action when we return. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello, basketball fans. What a pleasure it is to bring you into the 2K studios again. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith. A tremendous game we're seeing from Devontae Graham. He had 18 points, four rebounds, and one steal. He came in with something to prove tonight after having a very tough outing in their last game. Kenny, your thoughts on the Hornets' first half? The thing I've noticed more than anything is how well they spread the floor at the offensive end. Their spacing has been fantastic. And the end result has been a lot of good looks from three-point land. And now they've established themselves from long range, and the defense has to adapt. They're in really solid position right now. How about you, Shaq? What did you think about Minnesota? When you're that cold from the floor, it's always going to be an uphill battle. The ball movement has to be the priority in the second half. They need to be creating a lot of good shots if they want to uh, dig into this lead. <laughs> and that'll do it for our halftime report. Stay tuned for the second half. About to get underway. And there wasn't too much drama in the first half, but maybe things will tighten up here in the second. You look at Devontae Graham, what a contribution. Yeah, he's just been raining down on him from deep here. You talk about dialed in. Oh, man, what a tremendous first half. Okay, obviously he's feeling the flow, and he's looking to keep it going. And Minnesota has possession. Trailing by 17. Third quarter action getting rolling right now. Brought to you by Gatorade. All filled up and ready to go. Here's who's on the floor. And Charlotte looking at who they've got. Washington and Zeller are in the middle. Monk is out there with Rozier. And it's Hayward in at the small forward. And it's Washington missing. Washington's gotten only two of his eight attempts to fall from the floor. Now, here's McDaniel. Defense is right there. It's a great move, and he catches the defense completely off guard. You'd like to see a little more energy coming out of halftime with the defensive end. No one near Rozier as he lets it fly. Off target with his three. Timberwolves trail by 15. Vernon Gomez, no good. Here's the break. A shot by Hayward, wide open. Hits the three from the wing. Hayward's got 13 points. 
And the way Hayward measures the three ball, it's just textbook form. I mean, great balance. He's got this shot down pat. Russell from long range. And another three for Minnesota. And an eye for an eye. Both teams working to stretch the floor. Well, these days, so much emphasis on the perimeter game. But you can see why after that sequence. The pass to Rozier. And the shot is long. That's one for their first four to start the second half. And see, who well, really, because of that raw athleticism, Rozier was a mid-first-round pick back in 2015. And you can see, though, that skill set is evolving. Well, that's why Charlotte gave him the three-year, $58 million contract. I mean, the feeling is he's still reaching his full potential. We saw signs of growth last year. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Hayward passes to Washington. Good on the shot. Washington's got his third bucket of the night. The right there, the defense overcommits. Hayward with good awareness finds the open man. Out to the right wing. A wide open shot from Hernan Gomez. Good, and it's Russell picking up the assist. Russell's got his third assist on the night. A touch over two and a half minutes of basketball played here in the third quarter. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Hernan Gomez. And the Timberwolves making a change here. Towns has checked in. Let's take another look at the staunch defense during that mobile one block. Determined to protect the lead with the all-out effort defensively. Superb anticipation on the block. And so here's Charlotte. Pass to Rozier from the arc. And it's the Hornets, another three. And, and when Rozier is making this, everything else becomes easier. It's like seeing him stretch the floor. Passes it to Towns. Solid play in the low block, and that one's good. Towns has got 13. Oh, the timing couldn't have been better on that assist. Now, here's Monk. He's guarded by Russell. Here's Rozier. Kept alive by Charlotte. That's made a huge difference in this game, if you ask me. Their offensive rebounding has been sensational. You know we talk about it all the time, guys. Those second-chance buckets, always the result of that extra effort. Russell, no good. Charlotte leading by 15. Monk, no one around him. And it's the Hornets, another three. But well, this is Monk at his finest. Receiving the pass where he wants it, elevating and knocking down the shot. He lobs it up. Stolen away. Nice job to interrupt the alley-oop attempt there. Rozier for three. Knocks down the three ball. Rozier's got six here in this quarter. And guys, you'd have to say this run really triggered by their transition offense. Right side, Russell. Pass to Hernan Gomez. Good, and the assist goes to Russell. Nine points in the game so far. Their three-point percentage has taken a big leap here in this second half. Ogier, the pass to Washington. And then Washington with the dunk. That gives him a double-double in this one. 11 points and 13 rebounds. Mm, that's just nasty, guys. I mean, there's no lack of style in Washington's game. He doesn't waste an opportunity to put on a show. Minnesota calls timeout. And the lack of rim protection, top of the list. Without question. They're giving up too many high percentage looks. A trend that they'd like to reverse. Culver's checked in for D'Angelo Russell. And a switcher also for Charlotte. Ball's checked in. Now, here's Culver. He's covered by Ball. The 15-footer. From deep, Hernan Gomez. The Hornets pull it in. Hayward's got his seventh rebound of the game with that last one. Ball, no good. That works just like they drew it up. 
until the part where he short arms the lead. Here's McDaniels. And he battles for the ball and gets the second chance bucket. McDaniels got four this quarter. I wouldn't want to be the guy who has to keep him off the boards. He is a beast on the offensive glass. Hayward's got space. A rebound by the Timberwolves. Towns has got six rebounds here tonight. Now, here's Culver. He's tightly guarded. A rebound by Washington. Washington's got 14 rebounds tonight. Going after. Ball kicks to Zeller. And that's going to be too many steps. Gets the whistle on the travel. A moment now to check out who's leading in the all-star voting. And a lot of fans and players interested to see how this thing all turns out. And you look at Russell. He's on the cusp of the top ten in the Western Conference voting. So still a long way away from being named a starter. But the fans aren't overlooking what he's been doing this season. And we'll keep you posted as the voting continues. It's tipped. Towns with the steal. Here's the break. And that's out of bounds. Minnesota will retain possession. A rare block shot by Gordon Hayward. He has the instincts to do more of this, but neither the suddenness nor the strength. To the left wing. Culver dishes to McDaniels. Let's it go from 11. Well, see, that's a good thing about Zeller's defense. He doesn't gamble or bite on fakes easily. Kicks it to ball. Let's go. And Culver pulls it down. Culver's got his fourth rebound in this one. Towns, the best of easy. Hornets leading by 18. Here's ball. He's got 14. Just five on the clock. And then Paul slams it in. Wow. We are going to remember that one oh, for a while. I know I will, Greg. That, that was special. That was really special. Here's Towns. A shot missing. Now Charlotte takes it the other way. And it is flushed down with a nice jam. Oh, you got to love Rozier. Skying up for the dunk. Really seizing the opportunity and capitalizing with this tremendous leap in the building. Culver kicks to Hernan Gomez. He dishes it to Beasley. Back to Hernan Gomez. The Timberwolves again can't hit. Left side, ball. And that one off the back of the rim and in. Ball's got 18 points in the game. Offensively, defensively, they are in total control. Uh, starting to take over here, building a big lead that could ultimately prove this amount. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. No, I tell you what, he earned his money on that foul. The Timberwolves haven't made a mistake at the line yet. Ten of ten. Free throw drops for McDaniel. Jake Lehman's checked in for the Timberwolves. The Hornets also with a sub. McDaniels, he's checked in for Zeller. Both shots good from the strike. And here's Ball. He'll bring it up for the Hornets. Hayward outside. Goes up on the high post. Here's Washington. Wow, hammering it in. Oh. Well, I like how Washington gets positioned for the offensive rebound. He's got a nice feel for where he needs to be when the shot goes up. Charlotte shooting their sixth attempt at the charity stripe in the game. And some changes here for the Timberwolves. Tyler Zeller comes in for McDaniels. And it's Edwards in for Beasley. The Hornets also with a sub. Bridges checks in. Yes, yes, yes. 
Minnesota shooting 35% or so in the third quarter. Whatever they're trying is not working. Now, here's Culver. He's covered by Washington. Culver passes to Towns. Over to the left wing. And Culver gets it to go on the assist by Towns. Culver's got himself on the board with three there. Shooting off the catch is about confidence there. Culver demonstrating how it's done. That's a two from Rozier. And he gets it to go, hitting off the back of the rim. He, he's got the hot hand right now. As long as he can keep getting open, they've got to keep feeding him. There's the pass to Lehman. And the three off target. Charlotte has gotten 12 of their points from long range in the third quarter. Going four of five shooting. Bridges shot. Good. You know, spacing the floor is so important in today's NBA. So Bridges, three points. Ability, <laughs> it fits right in. Here's Wayman. And it's thrown down hard with both hands. He got up in the air. He just decided, you know what? I'm going to stay here for a while. I'm going to hit you with a little float. Float on. And oh. he finally takes it down for the finish. You can mention the floaters on this. Absolutely. Good, good reference. Good reference. Now, here's McDaniel. Not a lot of room. The finish was nice, but the setup was better. Yeah, G.A., the pick working to full effect before the stuff. Yeah, coach is definitely pleased. That's the execution he loves to see. Here's Lehman. They grabbed their own miss. A nice shot by Zeller. Oh, man, some perseverance from the big fella. Zeller hanging in there to collect the second chance points. Now, here's Bridges. He's got nine. Right side, ball. Down low, Washington. And then Washington with the dunk. And this is how you want to come out of the half. Prolific and efficient. Uh, just a dream scenario for them so far. Their offense looking like a well oil machine. Outside, Towns. Pass to Zeller. To the wing on the left. Shot clock at five. Here's Lehman. Bridges with the board. Charlotte in total control. 103 left here in the third quarter. Rogier for three. Rebound, Minnesota. Culver's got five rebounds tonight. Here's Towns. And that one hits back iron. And the stroke definitely lacking confidence this quarter. Nothing on target. Bridges dishes to McDaniels. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. Oh, the, the officials are all over that one. This is his first chance at the line tonight. And that 82% free throw percentage this season must have him feeling pretty good about himself at the line. First free throw is good. And some changes here for the Timberwolves. Ed Davis has checked in for Tyler Zeller. And it's Rodney Hollis Jefferson in for Jake Lehman. Biombo has checked in for Charlotte. Devontae Graham comes in for Ogier. And that one goes in. Two from the line that time. Minnesota shooting 34% from the field. That's not going to get it done. Passes it to Towns. He kicks to Edwards. Fires from deep. Gets in and good for his sixth field goal in 10 attempts. And boy, did he ever sell the pump fake. Worked to absolute perfection. Graham from outside. Hollis Jefferson with the rebound. And they're running. Oh, and there's the alley-oop. Oh, a nice defensive play to disrupt the alley-oop. From deep three-point range, and no luck with that time on the buzzer beater. 
And as we conclude the third quarter, pretty much a blowout. It's been a one-sided affair. It's Charlotte running away with this one. And we'll get it going after this from the Target Center. While we have the chance now, folks, let's go to our State Farm assist of the game. And the definition of teamwork right there, guys. I mean, what great communication between them, and what a beautiful feat. I mean, well, if you're the coaching staff, I mean, you're pumped up. This highlight will not only make it on the TV, it'll make it into the film session tomorrow. And with the fourth quarter upon us, time is running out for this game to become competitive. We've got Rondé Hollis-Jefferson. Downs is out there with Davis. And it's a Kogi in at the two. So that's the lineup for Minnesota. Can't quite find his three-point touch in the second half yet. He, I mean, he had two in the first half, but still none since the break. Wasted no time on that one. Bulls got the first field goal of the fourth quarter here for Charlotte. Uh, the man has no heart, and, and that's poor defense for a team that has a long way to catch up. Yeah, indeed, like that isn't going to get you back in the game. You have to stay connected to these shooters. To the middle, Ambo trying to break free. Martin with the bucket. When you allow good scorers to get uncontested shots at the rim, no wonder you're losing. Yeah, yeah. Horrible effort. It appears they may be on the brink of giving up. Stolen by Ball. A fast break now for Charlotte. Here's McDaniels. Goes back up. That one doesn't go. The Timberwolves go the other way with it. Now he hasn't chipped in with many points tonight. The good thing he had the guys around him to carry the weight. Hornets have gone two for five on field goal attempts in the fourth quarter. Here's Ball. Whistle blows. Basket is good. So a chance here for a three-point play. Yeah, outstanding job there of taking the harm and still able to finish. Game continues to evolve, Greg. Any changes in particular that you do not like? Mm, that's a, a great question. You know, I, I'd like to see the replay review uh, streamlined a little bit better. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind a touch more physicality uh, uh, being allowed in the game, but as much as we tend to complain, the one thing I have learned is if you're honest, you go back, we always complain. I don't care what the era is. <laughs> nobody's ever truly happy, and I'm not going to spend all my time worrying about that stuff, partner. I'm just going to enjoy the game that we are all so fortunate enough to be able to watch. Totally agree. Here's what the Timberwolves have lined up on their schedule. On Monday, they'll begin a road trip starting in Indiana, going up against the Pacers. Then on Wednesday, they continue the road trip, heading out to Detroit. They'll take on the Pistons. And for that matchup with the 76ers, you know they want to come out and make a big statement in that one. It won't be easy, but anything can happen. And the first one drops. And the Hornets making a change here. Monks checked in. And good on the second, so he makes them both. And even though they're down, they are putting on a show at the free throw line. Martin with it. Out to the right wing. And here is Monk. 11 feet away. It's hauled in by Carl Anthony Towns. Towns has got rebound number eight here tonight in the game. And Davis throws it down. And how about the communication between teammates on that alley -oop? And that's what you need to pull that thing off. Now Monk. This is to Martin. Not watching the line there. That'll be a backcourt violation. Chris, we know the business of basketball is red hot. Franchise values are skyrocketing. And not only that, Chris, the NBA 
is America's most popular sport among those 34 and younger. Well, yeah, it was cool, Kevin. That, that, that bodes well for the future, right? It wouldn't surprise me in the next decade or so if the NBA became the premier sport in the U.S. How about the force there from Culver, making sure to finish with power, leaving no doubt with that finish. Here's Martin. Got a hand on it. Four on three as they bring it up. A shot by Culver. Nobody around. And that one falls coming off of Davis's feed. Pure determination here, guys. A fourth quarter run that has them looking better and better as we get ready for the stretch run. Monk kicks to Martin. And he converts the layup. And we all know Monk likes to shoot. But their great decision, getting it to the open teammate. Here's Culver. I'm deep, and again, Minnesota with the triple. He's been fantastic, but he can't do it all by himself. Some of the other guys need to lighten the load and step up. Now, here's Monk. He's covered closely, and it's Martin missing. Yeah, and you could tell he thought that triple was going to fall. Here's Palmer. That shot off the mark. Good work defensively by Martin. And a fast break now for the Hornets. Here's McDaniels. And a foul call. Almost got it to go in, but he'll go to the line for two. And if they continue, Kevin, their outstanding free throw shooting, that'll help them seal the deal. Chris, today's coaches have a different way to get through to their players compared to some coaches of the past. Well, yeah, I, I think, you know, this culture is different. Uh, guys don't want to be yelled at uh, when they're giving their all. They want to try to find... Uh, a solution instead of getting emotional about it. So I think yeah, the emotional aspect at some point has been alleviated. And I think guys want to enjoy going to work every day and having a, a boss that they can discuss and figure it out with. I, I don't think the NBA is, is any different. And the Hornets making a change here. Craig's checked in. And McDaniels drops them both. And so it's Russell with it. He brings it up for Minnesota. Pass to Zeller. Kicks to Edwards. Here's the teardrop. And the rebound goes to the Hornets. And a fast break now for the Hornets. Martin with the ball. And it goes down two points. Martin's got six in the quarter. And this is why coaches talk about playing with pace. The scoreboard tells it all. Yeah, because it's so hard to prevent transition scores. Whenever you get an opportunity to get out and run, you take it. Fast break now for Charlotte. It's deflected. Second chance shot. A nice shot by McDaniels. Make a play. Come on. Minnesota's gone two for two from three-point land to start the fourth quarter. Outside, Russell. Now the pass to Edwards. Good, and it's Russell picking up the assist. Edwards got 19 points. Their third three-pointer in a row. Martin, the pass to McDaniels. And it's in there. If there's ever a successful shot that still gets your coach mad at you, that's the one. To the inside, Culver. And then Culver with the dunk. Man, the decision-making of Russell, dependable at finding his teammates when they're uncovered. Now, here is Martin. Pocket six. Pass to McDaniels. Monk for three. The shot will not fall. Nice D from Russell. And now Minnesota on the fast break. Drops in the tray off the fast break. And they're getting their points now almost exclusively from the triple. Four of their last five makes are from beyond the arc. Monk kicks to Martin. Zeller grabs the board. Zeller's got his sixth rebound on the night. And Russell gets it to go on the assist by Zeller. And all of a sudden, things finally coming together for them. The deficit's still large, but now not insurmountable. 
And, and the longer the run goes on, the more momentum will swing their way. Here's Edwards. And again, Minnesota with the triple. Yeah, D with very little pressure on their perimeter shooters. Three of the last five baskets they've allowed have been from beyond. Charlotte calls timeout. They're trying to stem the tide here. Uh, yeah, they have to regroup and, and revisit their strategy at the defensive end. And now, let's take a look at the New Balance player of the game. And he's provided them with a major mismatch on that low block tonight. That They've been able to lean on his scoring in the paint. And if nothing else has worked, he, he's given them a reliable option on every possession. They had not been playing very good basketball coming into this game. And that's when a team needs its star players to step up and stop the bleeding, just like he did tonight. Washington finds Rozier. Takes the 13-footer. Three on three. Zeller against Rogier. Easily outside. Russell from long range. Kept alive. I love the determination he showed there. Getting himself into good position under the glass. With the presence of mind to know just where the rebound was going to come down. Well timed. Rogier, that one wide left. Nice interior defense. Can't give him any space inside or he'll burn. And the dunk by Zeller. He has a lot of momentum as he drives to the cup, so not even the contact can keep Zeller from finishing. And that one falls for Zeller. Ball with it. And here is Rogier. That falls. Nice feed that time from Ball. Ball's got his eighth assist here tonight. An effective score when given this position. Rogier, he's intelligent and realizing when to try his luck. It's Beasley on the wing. Back to Russell. It's the three-point bomb. Russell's got a pair of threes here in the fourth quarter for the Timberwolves. He's leaning on the three-point shot a little more in this half. Only had one before the break, but he's got three of them since then. Passes to Washington. Here's Ball. He's guarded by Russell. Got a piece of it. Hope they get it back. Now Beasley. And a wide-open look for Seller. Off the mark, had a chance to trim it to single digits. Here's Rozier, and McDaniels with the block. And now the Timberwolves on the break. Fires the three. The Hornets pull it in. Zeller's got nine rebounds in the game, getting it done. But not his best day from three-point range. I mean, just one in the first half, and still looking for his first tier in half number two. Minnesota making a switch here. Towns has checked in. Here's Ball. He kicks it to Zeller. Puts up a three. It's rebounded by Towns. He is single-handedly dropping the temperature in here with that cold streak. 
this isn't like him, and he knows it. The best thing they can do is try to get him more easy looks. And the dunk by Zeller. Oh, fantastic dunk. And, and he hangs around up there just for a little camera time. Yeah, maybe he didn't want to land awkwardly. Who knows? But there he is, and we see it very clearly. And there's the goal in Carl Anthony Towns. That'll be his second foul of the game. Hornets lead by 13. And the Hornets call time here. Okay, well, let's go down to David Aldridge for a report from the sideline. Thanks, guys. I was able to hear James Borrego coaching his team during the break. He likes where things are headed, but he cautioned them to play smart the rest of the way. He said carelessness with the ball, with assignments, with rotations, any of that can undo what we've worked to accomplish so far. Kevin, they are so close. Here's ball. Stellar passes to Hayward. Charlotte moving the ball around. Towns comes with a double team, and the ball's tied up, so he'll have a jump ball. So it's the Hornets now. Zeller finds ball for three. Hayward. And again, the Hornets missing. Timberwolves trail by 13. Jumps up, and it's Beasley finishing it off. Oh, let's go home. That was just <laughs> ridiculous. I do not remember the last time I saw a dunk like that in a game. Free throw drops in for Beasley. And so it's Hayward with it. He'll bring it up for Charlotte. Ten-point lead. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. That's on Jaden McDaniel. Oh, man, right there. Hayward willing to sacrifice his body in traffic to make the play. throw drops by Hayward. Well, he was just a skinny kid coming out of college. Hayward's gotten much stronger and much better in a short period of time. <laughs> Hayward hits them both. Here's Russell. 156 left to play here in the fourth. Beasley outside. To the right side. Five on the clock. Here's Russell. Headshot off. Hayward with some nice D. Poke loose. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Minnesota takes possession. Timberwolves trail by 12. Now, here is Russell. Beasley outside. Pass to Towns. Over to the left wing. Six on the shot clock. And once again, off the mark by Minnesota. 
Hornets leading by 12. And clearly, we will not be witnessing a spirited comeback tonight, albeit as exciting as that would be. This was an excellent all-around performance for Charlotte. The differential in assists led to a lot of open looks, and it also helped to get um, you know more guys involved in the offense easy. And they made the defense adjust, but they just couldn't come up with an answer. And with this effort tonight, grabbing their eighth win of the year. And so they win their first game against this squad. It's a two-game season series, and they'll be going for the sweep the next time they face off. And as one might have guessed coming into this game, it was indeed another big game tonight for LaMelo Ball. Oh, he was the alpha dog out there tonight. Totally in charge of this game. No matter what the situation was, he was the one to dictate the action. They just blocked out the noise, kept on grinding, and this is their reward. Showing remarkable poise and focus uh, throughout the game. A sustained effort across the board. Here's McDaniels, and again, Minnesota with the triple. In perimeter scoring, I have to imagine it was a topic of discussion at halftime. But well, it had to be. These days, you need to stretch the floor somewhat to make everything else work. Free throw drop for McDaniel. Twenty-six seconds left in the game, and they can just let the clock run out here. Cannot argue with the W. Three-pointer, Hayward. That's good, and it's Rozier with the assist. And the Hornets lead by ten. And credit the whole team. It was a focused, concerted effort to put this one away. Yeah, I love how they play for one another out there. No signs of selfishness. They're just a total team effort. He lobs up the alley-oop pass. And so it's the Hornets taking care of business in this one. And in the win, a comfortable win in what was, I think, G, a pretty hostile environment. It, it really was. You, you know, it's never going to be easy on the road, but they didn't have too many problems with that tonight. And that'll wrap it up, folks, for Chris Weber, Greg Anthony, and David Olson. This is Kevin Harlan. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time.